right. uh, welcome back. Let's get back into what we were discussing. We were talking about the pattern of prayer that Jesus gave us, and we saw the different parts. Now, the last part there, when we were discussing about temptations, we clarified that it's not God who tempts us. It's Satan who tempts us. But because temptations exist, we have to pray for protection for ourselves. And there is a question in the chat here. Uh, Joanne, are you asking a question? You're saying tempting and testing. Is, is that a question, Joanne? Please let us know. No. Temptation is not from the Lord. So there are three things that we observe. Uh, test, temptation, trials. Tests are from God. For example, uh, Abraham. Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. That was a test. Why does God test to, um, to you know, in order to see our character? But we know what happened at the end of the test. God came to his rescue. Okay. And generally people say, if you're going through a test, then it's only meant for promotion. Meaning... God leads you through a test to strengthen our character and equip us for what lies ahead of us. So God's tests are very positive like that. But while we're going through the test, it will be challenging. So tests are from God. Yeah, that is accepted. We see that in the Bible. And God does take people through tests. Second is temptation. Temptation, it's different. Temptation is... We say it's an external inducement to sin, meaning Satan tries to attract us into sin. That is temptation. So what does temptation do? Temptation is trying to pull you into sin. That is temptation. That is not from the Lord. God does not tempt. Third is trials. Trials are the kind of experiences that the early apostles went through. They went to preach the gospel, persecution, opposition, hindrances. It is part of living here on the earth. Jesus said, but there will be trials here on the earth. You know, even I'm going, I've gone through it. So don't be surprised when you go through difficulties. So trials are there in the world and uh, they just happen by virtue of the fact that we live here on the earth, and especially because we want to serve the Lord, we are believers, there will be oppositions and persecutions that may come our way. But that's a given for all of us. So three things. Tests, which are from God. Temptations, which are from Satan. Trials, which exist, that you and I anyway have to go through. It's clear? Yeah, anything, Prem? Why is God allowing temptation? See, we won't say allow. As long as we are here in the world, in the flesh, it's a given. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, see, people take the incident of uh, Job and, you know, as a one off, and they say God is allowing, God is permitting. But you see, these, these trials and uh, temptations exist in the world anyhow. It exists, right? If I'm alive, I'm not immune to temptations. As soon as we are born again, it's not like God puts one space suit. Oh, no temptation for you, no trial for you, you'll be safe. No, you're in the flesh, you're living on the earth. We've got to face this, we've got to overcome it. So my point is, when we say God is allowing, God is, he's not sitting there and giving permission, okay, go, go tempt, you know, this one and that one. He's not doing all that. He doesn't have time for all that. Satan is here. Satan is doing his job. We come under attack because we are here. As long as we are here, it's bound to happen, but we have to learn to overcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, 
who touch my people they mm. touch my like i mm. there is scripture yes. like when uh, temptation or when satan satan temptation us touch us is like god touch us i get your point you're saying god will god will care for us he will protect us if satan attacks us no yeah that is also true but god is not going to uh, prevent temptation in that sense if we are in the world there is temptation even jesus was tempted that's why he given us free will right yeah. to overcome the temptations yes free will and we'll talk about many other things uh, as we understand what jesus did on the cross how he defeated satan we will have overcoming power over the temptations of the devil and uh, ma'am can you please explain the give example like modern test like in modern life in modern life modern society how god tests test um see test it can be of various kinds like for example uh, let's say we have a vision from the lord that we are going to do well in our career something mighty god is going to do but in in the initial phases we may go through some challenges where it's taking a long time we are not getting the opportunities we are not getting the breakthroughs even if you are getting certain jobs it's a struggle all that somewhere it's like trial and you may feel like it's a test god is looking at how your heart is during that period sometimes can god take a test in a way that uh, leave this thing ha huh. and do other things start yeah, up yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, right yeah. he can that. he can yeah so our willingness to let go yes yeah mike please Uh, i am little confused about how you know sometimes we make decisions about yes. temptation mm. make decisions in our heart mm. ki okay today i am not going to eat any sugar mm. okay so tempt how does the uh, devil come to know because devil can't read our mind how does devil come to know okay and that day only there will be something like you know passing <laughs> through things where we get free okay <laughs> so how does you know because they are talking about temptation yeah there are times when i resolve in my heart only not even write anywhere No, okay <laughs> yeah. little, uh, so it's, it's true that uh, satan and his demons can't read our minds it's only with our words that they can know what we are up to so even when we make decisions in the mind what happens is uh, see that's their job temptation is a full time job okay so they are working hard and they have their own strategies on how to get each one of us so what demons tend to do is they just study you your behavior your everything you never said it but they observe and they get it yeah yes uh, vinay mike we are supposed to be talking about prayer <laughs> talking about temptation okay we'll take little more time and then we'll get back into our topic the the question that was asked like uh, hmm. why does god allow temptation or mm. how can i be tempted in certain areas james uh, we already read james 113 god mm. can't be tempted nor can tempt us Others, but yeah. if we follow and just read verse 14 but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own oh, yeah. evil desire yes. and enticed right. so as for the example of sugar your body is used to taking sugar so when you see sugar your body is taking there i don't think satan is coming hey, eat sugar eat sugar or i mean not just i'm not trying to pull you down but just giving that example and it applies to all sorts of things like all all of us are weak in one or the other area and because we've been doing again and again pastor also said he uh, satan reads our behavior and he gets it So if somebody is uh, weak in eating, he'll give food. If somebody is weak in women, he'll show women. If somebody is weak in money, he'll show money. So that's how. So there are also two things um, 
Uh, thanks, Vinay, for sharing two things. So when we talk about temptation, we'll study about all this in a subject called believer's authority. There is external, which is what we call temptation. External comes through Satan and his demons. But what Vinay is saying is flesh. Flesh is internal inducement to sin. So we have a pull from both sides, inside, outside, which is why we have to learn how to overcome. We will learn how to overcome. One simple way to overcome, the way Jesus overcame temptation, scripture. It is written. It is written. Yes. Um, can we also say that temptation, how can we differ or how can we differentiate temptation from test is temptation takes us away from God. Mm. Test will bring us close closer to God. to God. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Thank you, um, Vinay. Any question? Ma'am, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 3, in verse 3, it is written that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Mm. So what did it mean? You know? See, it, it, it means that God is our deliverer. Same what we are praying in Matthew 6. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. So... God knows how to pull us out of that temptation. We have to cooperate with him. That's what it means. It's fine? Yeah. Uh, here in the chat, again, there seems to be a question. OK. Uh, so what was Jesus weak in before Satan tempted him? What was Jesus weak in? Mm. Yeah. So let's uh, quickly look at Hebrews chapter 4. What was he weak in? Okay, Joanne, that's what you're asking. But see, the fact is that um, he was a human being. So when one is a human being, we are just open to temptation. Just one second. I hope I'm getting it. Yeah, so Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are. But what is the special feature about Jesus? Yet without sin. So, did Satan only tempt in the so called weak points of Jesus? No. Everything, tempted in every way. But what is the lesson or the example that Jesus gave us? Being tempted, we can't prevent it. But we can overcome, yet without sin. That is the pattern, that is the example. Temptation is there, but that doesn't mean that we have to sin. We can overcome the temptation. Got it? So, Joanne, the answer is in every way, in every way, not just so-called weak points of Jesus or anything like that. Okay, sure. Yeah, she is just sharing a comment here. No, not just because of the purpose. See, the life of Jesus is a pattern. As a man, everything that he was able to do, he's saying, you can do it. I can do it because he's already given us the authority. He's already defeated Satan. So we don't have any excuse. We might say, oh, Jesus, you don't understand. You don't understand 21st century. He says, I understand everything. I was tempted in every way, yet I never sinned. So if I can do it, I give you the authority, you can do it. So that's the bottom line. Let's come back to our... Chapter? 
okay finally we went all over the world and came back so chapter 6 uh, verse 13 we understood it's not god who leads us into temptation but he delivers us from all evil so we can pray lord protect me from every form of temptation again there's so much regarding temptation temptation can happen in the uh, smallest or the deepest parts of us like our thoughts we may get a wrong thought temptation imagination suddenly one imagination some picture you see and you're distracted that's a temptation satan can uh, tempt with regard to our desires and affections wrong kind of desires wrong kind of affections we've spoken about lust right so how he can induce the wrong desires in us that again if we don't overcome it will lead us away from god then other things plans personal plans we have according to god's speaking to us we have certain plans but what satan will do he'll put new plans hey why don't you do this why don't you meet so and so why don't you go the other way and we end up in trouble so he can induce uh, a, a particular plan or uh, with regard to the things that are attached to us a temptation may come through our workplace a temptation may come through our finances temptation may come through the family in many ways if we are not on guard then we will not be able to escape it so basically the prayer is every day god protect me i am on the narrow path i am on the right track no temptation should overtake me give me the grace give me the strength give me the wisdom protect whatever you want to pray just pray thoroughly so that's the point and finally uh, in the same part this latter part of the same verse says again for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen so how did we start the prayer hallowed be your name magnify god how do we end the prayer magnify god that's how jesus taught us to pray now how to use this pattern take the pattern you can just write it down you can say uh, hallowed be your name spend 10 minutes in your own language praising and worshiping god then the next 10 minutes maybe you want to pray let your kingdom come in your own language and think about different areas of your life and say god in all these areas let your kingdom come uh, you may want to pray for the city for the nation so make it 20 minutes so 30 minutes up right next point or next pattern there pray for daily bread you may want to take five minutes for this okay 35 minutes we spent we just prayed for all our needs another five minutes you pray for the daily the needs of other people so 40 minutes up okay after that you use the next pointer here forgiveness five minutes just think do i have anything against anyone release forgiveness following that take time to pray god protect me from every temptation already 50 minutes final last 10 minutes you're worshiping God, you're praising God, all glory, honor, um, majesty, everything belongs to you, oh God. Ten more minutes, you're worshiping God. So even if we don't know how to pray, Jesus taught us. He said, look, you pray like this. For daily pattern, you can use this. There are many different patterns that people use. Um, but this is the pattern that Jesus taught us. It's a good one. We can use it in our everyday prayer. If we don't know how to pray, just as I shared, no, make a make a structure, and uh, you can write down, uh, sort of break up the points and write there, and spend time praying unto the Lord. So that's what we learn from the Lord's prayer. Now let's move on to praying in the spirit. So praying in the spirit is a privilege. It's a huge privilege. What is praying in the spirit? You know, the Bible talks about um, partnering with the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. So there are encouragements with phrases like um, walk in the spirit, pray in the spirit, 
be led by the spirit is a lot of partnership which is required with the holy spirit in the life of a believer you have a course on the holy spirit isn't it you have this here right so anyway in detail you are going to study in that so i'm just going to touch upon prayer in the spirit what is the meaning of that some people um, may state that praying in the spirit means praying intensely praying with all your heart you know pray with the spirit so some people interpret praying in the spirit like that is that the meaning of pray in the spirit or is it something else let us look at a passage 1st corinthians 14 verses 14 and 15 can someone read it please for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful mm. what is the conclusion then i'll pray with the spirit and i'll also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and also sing with the understanding hmm great so paul is writing this remember what we asked the question is is the meaning of praying in the spirit praying intensely is that what it means right answer paul is giving paul is saying if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays so what is praying in the spirit tongues it's tongues if i pray in tongue in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful that means when we pray normally with our words that is called as praying with understanding because when i say something like god um you know i magnify you bless my life meet my needs my understanding is involved i'm thinking about all these matters okay so when i pray in tongues what is paul saying when i pray in a tongue my spirit prays my understanding is unfruitful that means i'm not able to understand what i'm praying so when we pray in tongues i'm sure most of us have that experience what are you praying i don't know i'm just praying something what is happening my spirit is praying what is happening to your mind i don't know i can't understand what i'm praying so praying in tongues is like that my spirit man prays yesterday we talked about um, so those who were there uh, you know at uh, north first thessalonians 5 verse 23 we said spirit soul and body remember so when we say spirit is praying that's the innermost part of us the inner man is praying how does he pray or i'm just using he uh, no offense to the women okay but what we mean is the spirit is praying in a language that the mind cannot understand everyone understood what i'm saying yeah so the mind cannot understand when we pray in tongues now what is um, paul saying he says verse 15 what is the conclusion then i pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing with understanding so there are two ways of praying he's making a clear distinction twice he says pray with the spirit sing with the spirit pray with the understanding sing with the understanding that means you and i can pray in two ways we can pray in tongues or we can pray in our own language and we pray in our own language that is called as praying with understanding everyone fine with that great yeah there was a question any question yes my question is that uh, but some people understand the tongues mm-hmm. so what about that yeah so when we study about the gifts of the holy spirit we will see that there are um there are a few categories of tongues 
okay so one category is personal prayer language that's what we are talking about praying in tongues personal prayer language we cannot understand there is one more type of tongues which is a sign to the unbeliever okay that tongues the unbeliever can understand for example if you go to acts chapter 2 holy spirit was poured out on the people 120 people in the upper room they were praying in tongues but there were 15 different community groups who heard their own languages how tongues you can't understand no how come they heard because that's a different tongue that tongues is a human language so it happens sometimes we speak in tongues for us it's tongues but for another human being it's their own language they're able to understand what it is so there are different types of tongues got it but the tongues that we are praying about we are talking about is prayer language which paul is saying my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful i can't understand it we can't understand it yeah we can can we ask god to understand it we can it's a valid prayer uh, so some people what they say is as we ask god to understand usually after we finish praying in tongues god may put that in our spirit what did i pray for you may get the knowing of what you actually prayed for it's possible or second is there is a gift of the holy spirit called as interpretation of tongues so if the gift of the holy spirit is operational you can understand what that person spoke yeah one second i'll just come to um, this question pastor you said like um spirit soul body so mm. we are the uh, in uh, like we are also in three parts yes so the innermost being is the spirit so when we are speaking in tongues so we are partnering with the holy spirit and we are speaking in tongues and praying yes. in tongues yeah. so the whole holy spirit is putting words in our spirit and that is that those words are coming out of our mouth Correct, yes. so it's not that our own spirit is making up something and no so the no. holy spirit is putting words in our spirit and those words are coming out of our yes mouth. yes that's correct that's correct so how can we say that mm. Okay, there's a scripture. I'll try and find it for you. Those are the utterances of the, the Holy Spirit. He gives us the utterance. Yeah? Fine. Yes. One more question somebody had. Yeah. Different types of words. Mike, please. When we pray, we use different types of words. Mm. Like when we pray in the Spirit, only a uh, few words are there in mm. tongues. Like everyone... Um, Everyone using that type of words only. Like, mm -hmm. how can we find uh, they are speaking tongues? Yeah. Like, sure. So let's look at two verses. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's First Corinthians thirteen. Verse one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love though with I, though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels that means the um the language that we speak it can be human or it can be angelic okay so the language which we are speaking right when we are all speaking in tongues it can be some human language. I remember this was uh, maybe 2018 or 2019. We used to have a supernatural art. And uh, in the supernatural art that day, we were all standing in one big circle. And we had some African students. There was a brother from Congo. And uh, uh, we were praying in the spirit. We were praying in the spirit. And uh, he just stopped because what another person was speaking was... Uh, I don't remember which African language he mentioned, but I think Swahili or something. He was shocked. He's like, why are you speaking Swahili? He heard his own language being spoken. And it was another Bible college student who was speaking in tongues. 
so when we are praying in tongues it can be a human language or an angelic language but whatever i am speaking i cannot understand the person who is speaking cannot understand got it but now no. yeah okay. once again i'll try to answer his question and uh, prem is saying that uh, sometimes we we repeat we repeat the same uh, language i would say don't worry about it because ultimately uh, we'll come to it first corinthians 14:2 it says when we pray in an unknown tongue we speak mysteries unto god meaning who is the audience god is the audience god is understanding so no problem why why do we worry you don't worry same language different language same words different words god is understanding what we are speaking okay that is one point another point is usually when we speak in a language sometimes there is repetition of words for example you know we keep saying and and then then so so but am i making sense i'm making sense i'm repeating certain words but my language is making sense so who knows we are repeating the certain words but it's making sense it's a language don't worry about all those things god understands fine prem okay good next And how do we know that we are speaking the correct thing and like yeah. if someone is speaking in tongues huh but how will he know, he or she know that they are speaking the right thing and it's from holy spirit mm. yeah Because so because in the huh. beginning yes people might get confused that if it's me or if it's the holy spirit yeah yeah and then if someone ask that how do you get like how do you get this word then people get scared that how what to explain see we must understand that the way god has created us the way he has designed us um is to hear his voice and to understand his will that's the normal design and we as god's people we have a knowing from god so see there are many things that have happened in our lives when we knew it was god and there are things that have happened where we felt it was not god how did you know it's hard to explain but we knew because that's how god communicates to us so i just want to give you one scripture romans 8:16 it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god that means the holy spirit is making it clear to my spirit that he is speaking like this or he is doing like this or this is from god so this is what i must look for if i have the peace of god if the holy spirit is bearing witness in my spirit i have confidence that this is from the lord so look for the witness of the holy spirit uh just pray and say lord make it clear to me and the holy spirit will will make it clear to you you will feel confident that it is from the lord yeah so um see when it comes to tongues we already said that we can't understand it okay but whatever words we are getting we can speak even if it is one simple one simple syllable because tongues is a language how do we learn languages how do little kids learn languages even before abcd they just say one word ma pa that's it they can't say more than that they keep saying that for a couple of months or you know even for a few years when we are praying in tongues it's like a language we start like that because repeating 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 same it's okay no problem it's a language that's how you're going to get more words and you're going to develop that language because ma'am I mean, like i received the word way before but i never like concentrated on that word so now i'm concentrating on that word okay. but it's a one or more than not more than two or three words mm. so uh, i should like repeat continuously yeah, repeat yeah whatever repeat you get repeat. you just go with that whatever you get you just go with that because we don't have control right and uh, yeah. i don't have to focus on the interpretation right now 
or like what no harm if you if you want to know what it is you can ask god and say god please reveal to me what i am praying god can reveal it to us so we'll get back to our chapter okay come let's <laughs> get back here so now we've understood a classification between praying in tongues which is praying in the spirit and praying with understanding which is praying in our own languages everyone is clear no confusion no doubts okay good now why is it important to pray in tongues there is an apc publication called as the wonderful benefits of praying in tongues so you can go through each of them some points are given here which we will cover first one praying without boundaries okay praying without boundaries what does it mean it simply means that we can pray for things which are beyond our understanding let's look at first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 it says for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries mysteries what is that word mysteries any hindi speaking people here do you have your bible with you what is the mysteries ha huh? rahasya okay rahasya any any other language speaking people kannada tamil malayalam adasyam okay adasyam is tamil okay yeah okay we have some uh, we have people from other countries here so anyone you want to just share what that word mysteries is in your language Hmm. Okay. Any other language? Maybe one or two more. Okay. Telugu, Rahasyam. Somebody says <laughs> no. Okay. Something else. Okay. Um. Juliana, which language is that? You've typed in some language. What is that language? Okay. kikuyu okay that's a new language so she's written uh, it's uh, kiriga in their language uh, any other language mystery what is mystery rahasya okay i'm not able to pronounce it but yeah similar okay it's a mystery great so we all understand what a mystery is it's a secret it's something that we don't know okay so what is apostle paul saying here when we speak in tongues in the spirit we are talking mysteries secrets is anything a secret for god no nothing is a secret for god then why are we saying we are talking mysteries God already knows everything. No secret for God. No mystery for God. Very good. So it's a mystery to us. Meaning, I don't know what I'm talking about. Satan does not know what I'm talking about. So that is the benefit of speaking in tongues. I may be praying about things that my finite brain cannot understand. my brain can't understand what is there in my future okay but today i'm praying in tongues maybe i am praying for my life 10 years from now maybe i'm praying for my business i am praying for my family that doesn't exist today tomorrow right in the it way in the future i am praying into my future because that is a mystery to me i don't know those things exist or will exist so that's the benefit of praying in tongues i can pray for things 
which are outside the boundaries of my logical thinking. It's great. So I can be sitting here and praying for hours, and it's affecting my future. It's affecting my ministry. It's affecting my personal life. It's affecting my finances. It's affecting my family life. It's affecting everything connected to me. I could be sitting here praying in the spirit, and it's affecting somebody else. You know, sometimes God just leads you. You're, you're driving, you're doing something. You just feel like praying. You stop everything, you start to pray. Pray in the spirit. Why am I praying? I don't know. Holy Spirit is telling me, pray, I'm praying. Maybe we are praying for somebody else. I've heard many such testimonies where, you know, people are encouraged to pray. And they pray. And later on, they hear that somebody was in an accident or somebody was in the hospital or something was happening. At least they come to know in certain situations. In certain situations, we don't even know what we are praying for. You know, I heard one testimony of uh, some preacher. He went to do big ministry in some place. But that night, he was having terrible stomach pain. Terrible. Like he felt like, you know, his, his life is only going to end. It was so bad. And so he was just crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, you know, my life, it's in your hands. Heal me, heal me. And then suddenly he felt like um, uh, uh, warm oil was being poured out on his stomach and the pain left. So he was so grateful. He was thanking the Lord. And, uh, uh, you know, he asked, like, God, how come? How come all of a sudden the healing came? So it, he felt in his spirit that somebody was praying for him. And then he's a, he was a prophet. He passed away. And so he said, God, I want to know who it was, who was praying for me. And then God revealed it to him in the spirit. He was able to look into a particular um, country that he doesn't know. And he saw like, you know, like a jungle. And he saw some, uh, like a hut. Okay, small hut. And then he saw an old lady with a lot of wrinkles on her face. She was kneeling down and praying. It was as if the Holy Spirit showed him, that lady was praying for you. That's why you were healed. Can you imagine? God uses us in the kingdom. Sometimes we don't know whom we are praying for. Somebody needs our prayer. They may be in some other nation. It might be a leader. It might be a child. It might be you know someone else. But our job is to be obedient and say, God, Holy Spirit, you want me to pray for someone, I'm going to pray. Just pray in the spirit. You never know how it is affecting the life of somebody, maybe far, far away. But that's the beauty of praying in tongues. Even when my brain does not know, my mind cannot understand, I can pray. And that is praying without borders or boundaries. OK, um, any questions about this? So just encourage yourselves to pray in tongues, whether we understand it or we don't. So make that a discipline. I'm praying in tongues. Surely it is useful for my future or you know, uh, for somebody. Now, let's look at the next benefit. The next benefit is praying according to God's perfect will. Can one of us read Romans 8? 26 and 27, it's there in the notes, page 30. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26 to 27. Yes, please. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Hmm. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us yes. with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. That verse 27 there, it says, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints. How? According to the will of God. So this is a second benefit. What is that benefit? Every prayer which is prayed in tongues 
is 100% in the will of God. Because Holy Spirit will not pray a prayer which is not in the will of God. He will only help us make intercession in the will of God. So let's imagine somebody has just been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as many of you were saying, only one word, you know, they're saying something. Sure, sure, sure. Or something like that. That word, that small prayer is 100% perfect prayer in the will of God. We don't have to have any doubts. When we talked earlier about how to get answers from the Lord, prayer of asking and receiving, how to receive, we should pray in the will of God. Only then we will receive. So even if we pray a very short prayer in tongues, the advantage is 100% success. Success. Always success. Prayers in tongues are perfect prayers. Always, all the time. So, in times when maybe we are feeling confused, what decision to make, what to do, just start praying in tongues. Because what's happening? You're praying in the will of God. Mind cannot understand what is the will of God, but spirit man can pray. You're praying, praying, praying. And God leads us into his will. Because it is 100%. In the will of God. That's what scripture says. Romans 8, 27. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So how powerful I can pray in the will of God. And just take time through the day. Any time we can actually pray. So let me just stop here. Almost run out of time. Uh, but let me say also say this. That. Praying in the spirit, because it does not involve our understanding, we can pray anytime, every time. So uh, the mind can be focusing on something. Like, for example, I can be reading the Bible with my mind, but I can be praying in tongues with my mouth. So how much should we pray in tongues? How much should we pray? One hour, two hours, three hours? Yeah, as long as you can, as long as you wish to. That's again an advantage where God says, you can always be connected to me, always, without any break. So as you're walking, as you're doing other things, we don't have to pray loudly. You know, sometimes we can't pray loudly. When we are uh, in a prayer setting, maybe we can pray loudly, but most other times, we can even pray quietly, right? I, I remember in one of my jobs, I used to sit uh, in one place. And because it was uh, at a spot where they had CCTV cameras, OK? So I was literally sitting under the CCTV camera only. Like the that's my position. So I have to work from there. Whatever I do, everything is visible. So I can't be screaming in tongues, <laughs> right? So I used to work on my computer, but I'm constantly praying in tongues. My mouth is moving very little or not moving at all. So I'm just praying in tongues the whole time, the whole time. But working also, because it's possible. You can be driving your car, riding your bike, and praying. It will not affect our concentration. That's what I'm trying to say. So we have an opportunity to pray at all times. So I encourage all of you, pray as much as possible to your heart's content in tongues, because it is very powerful. With that, let's close for today. And um, I'm going to request uh, someone from the online batch to please pray. Father, you want to thank you for the time that we have uh, heard from you. We are grateful for gathering all of us, O oh Lord. We are also grateful because you are teaching us your deep truth of the kingdom. Father, help us to value and to receive all the truth that is coming from you for our lives and for your glory. And now, even as we break for the day, we pray that you'll be with us, you'll wash over us, 
you will take care of us, Lord. We want to pray a blessing over our teachers, our pastors. Would they, Lord, be blessed of you, and would you meet them at the points of their needs? This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mwai, and thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day and a wonderful week ahead. And, and you want to speak.